celebrate getting our minds together too. Mental health hasn't always been at the top of the priority list in the black community, but that's changing and we love to see it, especially for black men. Creating an environment that's open, honest, and vulnerable is so important and it allows space for growth. So when it comes to men, where do they feel most comfortable? The barbershop. <laughs> It's trim day at the barber shop, but here a sharp line or fade comes with much more than a dope cut. Oh, you got me looking like a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Through a program called the Confess Project, licensed barbers are trained to be mental health champions for black men less likely to see a therapist. Barbershop is for us as African American men uh, one of our safe places. And it's in the barber's chair that clients get a fresh look. <laughs> designed with mental healing. In a lot of places, even maybe at work or sometimes even at home, um, I might feel uncomfortable to express myself in certain ways. And so when I come to the barbershop, I can just relax and, and just talk about pretty much anything. I know personally I've been fighting depression and anxiety uh, for about 15 years. 92 JM's the big station. Your man Stack 3 is in the house right now. Radio personality Houston Stackhouse speaks openly about mental health. Just try to stay positive, try to, try to keep pushing. So we all got to do. He too finds support through his barber trained by the Confess Project. I'm able to come in, just relax and just let everything just go. Hey, so I'm Lorenzo Lewis from Little Rock, Arkansas and I run an organization called the Confess Project. Organization founder and Arkansas native Lorenzo Lewis had his own mental health issues. It started with just my story of my own depression and really has evolved to becoming a national movement. A movement of more than 1,000 barbers in 15 states okay. trained how to listen, detect problems, and guide clients to professional help if needed. Our barbers are peer intervention uh, specialists, I like to call it. They're advocates on the front line. And they're really supporting someone through a conversation which could really lead to true impact and a true quality of life change. It's tough getting black men, though, to the therapist, right? <laughs> it is, absolutely. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, in 2019, suicide was the second leading cause of death for African Americans between the ages of 15 and 24. And suicide for black men was four times higher than for black women. Taiwan Dickerson has been a barber since 1998. With the help of the Confess Project and other mental health training, he has more than barber tools to provide help and resources. And he's not afraid to ask tough questions. Did, did we ever reach out for help? Did we ever, you know, uh, are you open? So you'll ask them? Yeah, I would ask them. Point blank, know, how just, many actually say, yes, I have? Yes, I have several. I have several. He tells me one of his clients was admitted to a mental health facility after he convinced him to get help. That was a good, awesome moment because I felt like he was at his breaking point. He felt like he was about to, to just give up on life. Resistance to mental health treatment? To be connected to shame and guilt. Uh, a lot of it, with, particularly with black men, is black men have so much of the stoicism to live up to, of being strong and powerful. And truly when, you know, I think when we break through and understand that this is about us getting our power and getting the control of our life. And can leave a positive effect on an entire family just by spending an hour or so getting shaped up and brushed off. Like I said before, we love to see it. And, you know, it's already time for our first break. Oh, my gosh. But when we get back, you'll see my combo with Wallace, Sean and 